good morning everybody and welcome to Coffee with Conti. And you know I like to get crazy and have fun when it comes to Corvette. But fun we're gonna have once we get there. The crazy today is we're driving from Columbus, Ohio to Houston, Texas. I know, they make airplanes. It's a, a long story, but this is gonna add to the memories and the adventure of our Corvette. Excited to share that with you guys. We're going to Houston to celebrate the delivery of our first ever C8 Z06. It was delivered to Steven at LMR back in December, late model race craft. And he and his staff are already having a ton of fun with that car. They also do an amazing job with C5, C6, C7, and C8 Corvettes, and we're gonna show you today on the show. So on Coffee with Conti, it's a road trip. Let's go to Houston. feel like you're right at home, don't you? <laughs> All right, so Steven's still out doing a test drive. We're at LMR. This is actually a temporary location. He's got a new location coming soon. I'll let him tell you about that when he gets back, but it's, it's kind of cool to pull up here and see all the projects that they're working on right now. And of course we have the LMR insignia right up there. So you know these cars are extra badass. Oh yeah, and I think, yeah, right in there is the C8Z06 that we sold them. And that is the whole reason that we're here in Houston to celebrate the delivery of our very first C8Z06. This shipped out in December. Uh, Ricky was in the hospital. Steven's been a good past customer, he understood, but he wanted to jump on this car and get working on it right away. I can't wait to see what he's done. Ryan said something about this car over here. I love this. You know, thinking about it, I, I, might, I might have to do something to my new spec so I can earn the LMR insignia of my Corvette. Ryan said, hey dad, there's those tires that we were talking about, those Toyo Triple R8s. And I'm gonna get some of those for the high-speed tracking stuff that we had talked about before on the, on the channel. It's great, oh, I love the shark gray and the C7Z06, Long Beach Red, Watkins Glen. Man, are they busy. Look at this. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, we'll get a ride in the C8Z06. I know that uh, that's what Ryan's hoping for. Look at the back of the rapid blue car. Ryan said, look at the back of the rapid blue car. Okay, so let's look at it here. Those are pretty cool. Ooh. You like those, huh? Yeah. Ryan's gonna put it in this spot right here. So we're right at home at LMR, Houston, Texas. Got to share this experience with you guys. Yeah, what's up, crazy dog? <laughs> I'm driving down, I'm like, I know it's at around 10 or 11, and I'm driving, I'm like, there's a blue Corvette on my ass. <laughs> I'm like, that's gotta be him. Yeah, I absolutely, like, man. What are the odds you pull it right uh, as I pulled out of the shop? Oh, man, you're How doing you? such a great job. I'm doing great, man. I mean, you really drove, I expected you to fly in town. No, not at you're all. Like, you're like, not at all. Man. Sorry. Hey guys, what's happening? <laughs> Sorry, this is Rick. He's the one that gets me all the beautiful Corvettes. So yeah. the first one was the 1901, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the first blue, one, the blue. Admiral Blue, yep. which I hate to say it, it's still my favorite. Is it? Well, that's probably why he went with the blue again. I on did. The C8. I did. The blue, the blue, uh, the 1901 he got us. Then he got us the white C8 in 2020. Yeah. And then uh, now the beautiful Z06, which 
We haven't even got to talk about it yet. No, not we yet. haven't even given a video of it yet. Of my yeah. first impressions. Well, that's the whole reason I'm. That, so yeah, we're gonna do all that today. I, I wanted to acknowledge you, thank you, and just celebrate. You were the first recipient of a C806 from our store. Nice. I was so proud that you were the guy that got the very first one, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate it no, because seriously. it does take us, as you know, R&D stuff, and it takes oh, no, a no, while. No, so right. if I can get my hands on one a little bit quicker, right. it helps a little bit versus competition. But right. it, it's all cool. All right, so what have you done to it so far? Uh, I'm sure exhaust, you're the exhost, yeah, I'm, I'm I, knew, show I knew it. You. Yeah, I'm gonna show you, and we were debating on GM doing... designs a special exhaust, and Steven's like, oh no. a million dollars for that, it. That, that shit's coming out. Yes, yes, wait till you hear it, bro. You're yeah, gonna I know. love it, wait, you're yeah. gonna love it. I was talking to the guys in the shop, and they are just like, oh, he's already done this, he's already done that. <laughs> well, and there's so. more to do, and I was tempted on going crazy, but I was gonna wait for you to at least drive it and see it now, Fantastic. give you impressions, and then we'll go crazy you're after gonna, this. You're gonna take uh, my son Ryan for a ride? I got plenty I wanna take him for a ride in. So I was okay. just talking about we have, I just wore that shirt yesterday. Did, did you send did. me one of those? Yes, I did. My my little yeah. girl, Here, give me that, that my, my girl right. is three. And yeah. Corvette. I sent you some other Corvette. stuff. There's one last thing, I sent you a bunch of stuff, and then I figured this would be great for next Christmas. It's a blue Z06 Perfect. Corvette ornament that'll go right on the tree Perfect. for the family. That's your car right there. So Dude, you thank you. That, brother. Dude, thank it you, looks man. so good. Like yeah. the way, like, I think I told you I just the outside, but you kind of designed the rest of it. No. He designed it perfect. And I even said yeah. don't do the carbon fiber, but I, I like oh, the for carbon the, for, for the, the interior. Oh, for no, the, interior. the interior. Oh yeah. And I was like, man, I like the suede look. I'm the other one that we had. Yeah, but, we did talk about I, that. But I like the carbon fiber. You end up doing it. And I'm like, for I, me, I'm glad you did guys it. like you, and you're so busy, you're moving 200 miles an hour. And That's what like, I was like, hey, just give me blue. Rick, what do I need? What do I need? <laughs> I said, hey, you know what? For the inside, you really need to step this up a notch and have it look different from the regular Stingray. That's exclusive and that's to does. Z06, and you're like, oh wow, bro, I the, love it. My, the technicians, yeah. all everyone that works here, and even customers. Well, what's the difference when they sit in it? That is the first thing. They sure. see the steering wheel, yeah. and they see the carbon fiber versus yeah. the the stingrays. Sure. Yeah, just another level. Well, as, man, it, I, as it should be. I wish I had the cool shop to show you, but I can still show you around this one. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we got tons, we got tons of cool shit to show. All right, man. But yeah, obviously we have a million cars out here. Yeah, we're uh, walking around. Right now, this is here. like 6,500 square feet. We had another 6,000 square feet of just storage of cars, like with engines out of them and stuff. Just right. we have so many cars around here. But yeah, little showroom, nothing crazy. Sure. Of course, sales guy's not here to answer the phone. Where the hell is he at? He's holding the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Parts guy, Will. Will Rick. Guys, good to meet That's you. That's Ryan, one of the technicians. Doing a nice job, man. Thank you guys. Oh, this is awesome. Take yeah, the two come together. Huh? Yeah. And then the port's coming off there. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a little intel. You guys can't see this till 2025. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. Yeah, delete all, delete, all, delete, all the, delete all the verbiage that yeah, yeah, we said. Yeah, yeah, we delete all that Delete all the about. verbiage. The, the C8 Stingray, the pushrod motor, which we've yeah. known forever. Sound awesome, sound good. Yeah. But once you put it, it's quiet, you can't hear yeah. the exhaust. You put our cat back on it, you feel like you're driving a sports car. It's the best way to describe Dude, it. Dude, when you start talking about these cars and the builds and some of the stuff we haven't shared with you guys, it is so exciting for me to see that. Uh, I know the customers get into it. You're just like I am. I sell 80% yeah. of my Corvettes all over the country. You got cars being shipped in from all over the country. Is there a specific, this is probably not a fair question, That's but okay. I'm gonna ask anyways. Is there a special car, a generation car, that you prefer to work on that's easier to work on, mm -hmm. that you're happier with the results of what you do more than another generation? I would say the C6 LS3s and LS7s. I knew he was gonna say C6, just, I just freaking knew it. Just cause I, that's what I started doing the most of, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. Or tuning the most? No, I've sure. been doing this for 24 years now. Yeah, well, So then. the F-bodies were back in the day and then the C5 Corvette, which sure. the, the IAC motor and the F-bodies sucked for tuning. The C5s sucked at the beginning, got better tuning, now is fine. But right. the C6 platform is, just easier. To You're doing tune. some Mustang stuff too. We're doing Ford stuff now, but back yeah. to the Corvette, the C6 stuff. Yeah. The C601 that I'm gonna take you for a ride in is awesome, but yeah, <laughs> dude, I'll, we'll take them both for rides. But the my favorite still car today, even though I have that C806 out there, is the 1901. 1901. Something about building because I can do everything I want to it. Yep. With my fingertips tuning it and everything, yeah. that's why I like it, and it's a front engine car. It mm -hmm. just feels like you're in a muscle car. Yeah. The best way to describe it, I'll probably say this a million times. When we go drive that C8 Z06 with our exhaust on it that you hear, yes, it sounds like you're in a badass fucking Ferrari. <laughs> like, but, uh, but, time, but I say, because I, I try to explain it to people, I love it. and people say, oh, it's just a Corvette. I'm like, to me, driving it, mm -mm. it's better than a Ferrari. Better. Yeah. I've driven every new Lamborghini, every new Ferrari, every new McLaren. They're cool. Right. To me, that car's better. I was telling, I just, I was I telling people on my channel, you know, some people are like, oh, I hear there's a little bit of vibration. I go, yeah, guess what? It feels freaking great. Yes. You feel immediately, as soon as you start that car, 
You've, I'm in something different. I'm in something special. This is this this is a race car. Baby. And again, all yeah. I've been so I've been doing I've been in business 18 years. So all I've done is push rod motors, meaning you know the LS, L2, LS1, LS2, LS3, LS7, right. all push rods. So right. This is my first dual overhead cam GM motor. So to hear that thing and when you're driving it, right, you don't feel like you're in a Corvette. You yeah. don't. Yeah, my son's really into this stuff, so I'm glad that he came with me because I want him to see what the process is and, and learn, and who knows, that might take him in a different direction. There's, Besides, he loves cars, but he loves the behind-the-scenes stuff, the under-the-hood stuff that you're doing. And we'll show you more because when okay. it comes, this comes from what we do, but even just machine shop work, if you like doing engine stuff, there's so much in this industry that you can do from wheels and tires to exhaust, you know what I mean, right, accessories right. to sure. getting your hands dirty, doing engines or bolting on superchargers or turbo kits or, or just being the videographer yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> which which tell me is that's not a bad you see job steven start smiling because when you bolt on superchargers and he just started getting this big smile on his face more boost more boost <laughs> more, more, power, more boost more power, right, right? So 6.2, okay. all we do is put a forged piston in it, forged rod in it, stock crankshaft. Um, obviously, you see a billet intake manifold on it. We get rid of the plastic intake. So under high boost applications, plastic intakes aren't the greatest. They can swell and sometimes break. So we always do billet intakes on all of our high boost applications. Um, and I did the top mount. Everyone else does rear mounts. I know. I, just, I like this better. It just, it looks, again, people that go to car shows, Right. I just think you want to show it off and it looks cool as shit and it functions perfect. My right. biggest thing that everyone's worried about was, well, man, is it hot? Is it going to overheat? And I beat the shit out of him. I have nothing to worry no, about. Exactly. Um, you started but, working on C8s. So one thing I thought was really ingenious, and that's how you stay in business, how, that's how your business is growing, is you were doing exhaust kits. And you said it was adaptable. You said, yes. here, do this package if you want to do this later, upgrade later, upgrade. And didn't have to redo everything. So I thought that was awesome. So this titanium cat yes. back, which yes. is what, again, we we'll put on your car out there right now, or if you want to wait for the new one. We'll <laughs> yeah, we're going to wait for one. the new one, but, but yeah. But literally, you, can, you buy the kit, and then if you ever want to do this stuff later, it bolts directly onto it. So you don't have to yeah. spend money twice, yeah. you know? But it's yeah, exactly right. This one's got everything, like I said, that we can do for now, but the clutch still is our limiting factor. The, the DCT, the transmission, we haven't broke a transmission yet, but okay. the clutch slips after so long, right? I can only put so, so much horsepower, that kind of neck it right What would you down. want to do to the DCT if you could? Uh, billet gear sets and everything else in the case of, but we our first billet uh, clutch basket should be here like the end of the week to, okay. to test. Okay. Um, right now, it's still a stock basket. So these are wet clutches. I don't know if y'all know that. The clutch, it's not like a dry clutch. So picture like the C601 that you're pushing the pedal in, mm -hmm. it's a dry clutch. You have a clutch with the pressure plate and everything on it right, right. there. This is like a automatic transmission the way I describe it. It's a wet clutch, meaning uh, it's a basket with clutch material in it and the fluid sits inside of it. So it's a wet clutch. And let's just say there's six discs from the factory, but we go and put eight in there and as thick as possible. We just trial and error till we finally get it to hold more clamping force, more horsepower, right? That's why GM so particular on this DCT filter for the fluid changes and yes. the regimen as far as doing that as you're supposed to. And that's the first line when of defense you first get to all that. And they even say when you first, if you, this car stock, you want to go road racing, they say to add an extra, what, two quarts, two quarts yep. Yep, which we, we do. Um, and then we do the relearn procedure once you put the new clutch in it, and that's what helps get everything set right. That okay. that's kind of lets us know whether the clutch is what we are trying, is kind of working or not working, because right. <laughs> it'll fail or not, you know what I mean? It right. goes through it, it's good. But right now, that's our limiting factor. I mean, this one went a 9.1. Just wow. this past week, it went a 9.18 wow. at 158 miles an hour. Ryan shaking his head behind the camera. I love it. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, Josh, it. it's sick. This one, this one's sick. Uh, the red one that you saw um, on the TV show and stuff, yes. that, that one at 8, that's the world record still. We went at 8.83 yeah. at 160. But again, the clutch is the limiting factor. I want to go, I mean, the motor will hold it. Everything will hold it. I just, the clutch won't. So it goes in. The My favorite car to drive build this is our most common package for the 1901s this, this is getting our thousand horsepower package on it so i'm sorry what is it again this is our thousand horsepower package. okay that's right sorry right. dan's up dan here you got it back together you ready to fire this thing up soon or what i need a beer okay so we pull the blower off uh you can't see much but you can see the long tube headers are on it new, sp new spark plugs new wires uh all this comes off the cylinder heads come off we put all new valve springs double valve spring kit uh bigger push rods you have 
the lower balancer down there to spin the supercharger harder. So we do an ATI balancer with a larger ring on it. So mm -hmm. That's what gives us our boost. So now this, these packages usually make around 16 pounds of boost. And we had a five inch, uh, we designed like a titanium uh, air box for them. They work really well. Uh, Rotofab finally came out with a plastic one and plastic doesn't hold heat as well. So I just started switching to these and they work very well. But a package like this, you'll hear it. Well, if we, if we get the ECM today, I can start it for you. Um, I remember when you bought the one for me, you were sitting on the couch in my office. And so, Nothing else mattered. You were ordering that ECM and then he's on the phone. He's on the phone. No, no, no. I need it right now. He's like overnight. How much? I mean, yes, right now. Because you're so serious. Because that was the first getting thing. On. It was. It was like the first day. But that was the first car since I've been in business for 20 years that took six months to get into the ECM. Every yeah. other platform, they, every year they'd say, yep. oh, you're not going to get into it, Steven. It's going to take a while. Right. We get into it within three weeks, four weeks, a sure. month at the most. Yeah, GM that had a lot. ZR1 was yeah. the first one that took six months. That's why when I got it from you, literally, they, we just got it. I was like, mm -hmm. I have to get it. And it's now getting built. Um, but yeah, same thing. Like we port the supercharger. So that one, our 1,000 horsepower package is essentially bolt-ons for the camshaft. When you want more than that, then we port the supercharger, do a little bit more fuel system, and it goes from that one will make like 850 rear wheel horsepower, right. or 1200 we call it, we'll make about a thousand. You spent a lot of money on the ZR1s and doing your R&D, so now it's it's an easier it, plug and play for you yes. because of all the stuff yes. that went to get you to this point. And that's why the blue one that I had, it, it helped tremendously to be able to get it and just what works, what doesn't work. And like, I will say, I've been tuning these cars for 20 years. That was one of the hardest cars to figure out tuning wise. It has a bypass valve, that's a, a throttle body, we're like an LT4 and everything else, it's a mechanical. So you don't have to worry about boost. You just put the pulleys on, it makes the boost that you want. Well, these things have a throttle body and the stock computer says, hey, wait a second, why am I making 15? I'm only supposed to make 11. So the bypass valve will open and drop the boost back down. Oh, so it took crap. me a long time. Like, I mean, I'm, I sat here for weeks just on the dyno, making test, testing. Did that work? Nope. Did that work? And nope. you're Did pretty impatient, nope. so that had to be oh, frustrating tr for you. Oh, trust me. And then, but then when it finally figured out. Guys in the shop are like, oh my gosh, I hope he figures it out. <laughs> that's how the C7 was too. Yeah. The, the 2014 C7, yeah. the direct injected 14 C7 was completely different than anything I've ever done. And the direct injection to get it to work with boost, it just took a while. But once you get it, it feels so good. Yeah. Baseline between 530 and 570 rear wheel horsepower, so you're about to feel another 500 <laughs> rear wheel horsepower. And again, nothing crazy. I'm gonna do third gear to low RPM, so okay. it's not gonna go sideways or do anything crazy. So hopefully you'll be okay. Oh, I won't scare. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you what, this is... That's what I try to tell people, like, 
I can show this all day long, but you don't feel the G's. I love it, man. It's so wow. much fun. It's impressive. So you've had all kinds of Corvettes. You are undoubtedly a car guy. Yes. What do you like most about this car so far? The sound. This thing, you start it up and drive it, the first time I heard it back out of the trailer, does not sound like a Corvette or a push run motor. Right. And then we just did little modifications to the exhaust. Um, essentially, got rid of the big cats that came with it. We okay. put like a high flow cat on it. Okay. It's a little bit louder sure. than what it was, but to be honest, it was, uh, it was loud stock. To me, and maybe I'm just getting older, but as a 40 year old guy, I'm serious. <laughs> right. and, and I do this for a living, so I build cars, I want to make them louder for sure. people. I drove it for the first time, I'm like, to be honest, it sounds pretty damn good, like stock. Remember what Chevy said when they intro Z06 the streets will never sound the same. 